Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Being raised by a good Irish woman who came from not one but two Irish parents herself, I heard many an Irish proverb in my day. And I know this is a tough sell to a normally German crowd here, <laughs> but let's try it. These Irish proverbs are easy to recognize. They're cute, they're clever, they have a certain meter, melody, and rhyme about them as they're quoted. And they often contain a veiled spiritual wisdom. For example, a sunbeam to warm you, a moonbeam to charm you, a sheltering angel so nothing can harm you. Ooh, tough crowd. Let's try again. I think you'll like this one better. As you ramble through life, whatever your goal, keep your eye on the donut and not on the hole. There we go. I grew up on expressions like this. And of course, my grandmother's favorite one to quote, all four foot ten of her. If I heard it once, I heard it a thousand times growing up. Oh dear, bread and beer, if I were dead, I, you finish it, wouldn't be here, yeah. Now if you grew up Jewish, you might quote a different proverb, but this one doesn't have the, the meter, the melody, the rhyme to it, but it does not lack the wisdom. The Jewish proverb says this, if a stone falls on a pot, woe to the pot. If the pot falls on the stone, woe to the pot. Either way, woe to the pot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but there is wisdom there. And the wisdom of this Jewish proverb comes from today's gospel lesson. Verse 18, where Jesus identifies himself as the cornerstone of the faith. Where he says, everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. Meaning, anyone who dares reject Jesus as Savior, Redeemer, true Son of the living God, woe to him. Judgment be upon him. Well, people were just not getting it. And prophets could only do just so much. Prophets could only bear messages. They could only warn, encourage sinners to change their ways, to trust in God. But in Jesus, the people could know God, having seen God in the flesh. But those who were God's own people, whom he loved from the beginning, still did not see. So let's use what I like to call a modern-day parable for another level of understanding. And the parable goes like this. A man had a farm, and on a winter's night, he kept his barn warm. Outside the barn, in the winter's cold, a group of sparrows who didn't know enough to fly to warmer climates perched in nearby trees. The farmer offered warmth, comfort, light, food, and shelter to the birds. But try as he may, he could not entice the birds to come into his barn. He left the door open for the warmth to escape. He turned on lights in the barn at night. He put feed on the ground. But they, the birds, did not understand, nor did they come into his barn. One day the farmer said, if I could only become a bird myself, then I could fly up to the birds in the trees as one of them and communicate with them and lead them into the barn where they would come to know the comfort that I offer. So, God did just that. 
the second person of the Trinity, the divine Son of God, equal to God in glory and majesty beyond our knowing, came to earth. He became human so the people could see the face of God and know His love, hear and understand His words so that He could lead His people into His barn, into the kingdom of God. Yet even though He became human, God in the flesh, many still did not believe and rejected the very Son of God. Jesus was, Jesus is, our chance to truly know God. Our chance at the warmth of the barn on a cold winter night. Our only chance at peace and certainty of God's saving grace to us for now and in eternity. It boggles the mind to comprehend what God the Father did. And as we hear Jesus tell today's parable, we think, how can this landowner, after servant upon servant was rejected, beaten, and thrown out of the vineyard, how can he then send his own son? If you were a landlord, how much would you tolerate before bringing the weight of the law against your tenants? You might say that God was well within his right to exercise judgment on us, to apply the law, that the wages of sin is death, and to bring it on. Yet even though the creation rejected the Creator, even though the children had run away, even though they persecuted every messenger and did not listen, still, God so loved the world. God so loved His sheep who had gone astray. God so loved the tenants of His vineyard who rejected the prophets. God so loved you, and God so loved me that he exercised incredible patience on his creation and then sent his son. But the son was coming for more than just his father's rent money or a portion of the harvest. God sent his son not to take, but to give. To die for all the rejection and all the sins of the world. Now here's a thought. Here's a thought you've probably never thought before. What if Jesus had remained in heaven? What if he never descended, never came into the vineyard? What if Jesus never took on frail human flesh, never surprising Mary and Joseph, never putting Bethlehem on the map? What if Jesus never performed a single miracle on earth? What if Jesus never ascended to a cross or shed his human blood, never knowing the human pain of our sin, but instead somehow paid for our sins in a virtual realm, in spirit alone, absorbing our sins like a spiritual or an invisible sponge, giving us a virtual sacrifice, a virtual forgiveness. If Jesus had done that, would we, could we, understand the love of God and the sacrifice Jesus made? Just like the farmer who wished he could become a bird, so that he could lead the birds inside, so they could receive the gift and know the person and the compassion of the one who offered them shelter, so also our God took on human flesh. So we could know the face of God. So we could see and hear the message of repentance and forgiveness. So we would have among us one who could represent all men, all women, whose physical death 
would mean something for us because we understand love in this way through suffering and sacrifice. But many were still resistant. The vineyard was given to other tenants. The gospel was given to others who received. You and me. The ones who receive the Son, both in the flesh and in spirit. Thus is today's parable. And thus we remember Lent and we return to God our fruits through the Son, our Lord Jesus, true man and true God. Now, you remember those silly Irish proverbs we began with? Well, the truth is, they're not so silly, but they are rooted in gospel wisdom. A sunbeam to warm you, a moonbeam to charm you, a sheltering angel so nothing can harm you. Our lives on this earth, with so many provisions and reminders of God's presence with us, and our sheltering angel is Jesus, who died for our sins and to defeat sin, death, and the devil so that nothing can harm us. And then the one you like, as you ramble through life, whatever your goal, keep your eye on the donut and not on the hole. Is this really spiritual? Oh, you bet it is. As we ramble through this life, the cross and the one who hung there is our donut our substance, that which fills us. The world, well, that's our whole or our void, emptiness, folly, futility. And as for the, oh dear, bread and beer Irish proverb, ah, that's just my grandma. But the parables of Jesus are godly wisdom. And today we learn through this parable the patience of God and the extent of his love that he gave us his best, his only son. So as Holy Week draws closer, let us draw closer to our Lord and Savior, the one God sent for us. Amen.